In today's video, we will be taking an unboxing and an overview of the ASUS Prime B450M K2 or II motherboard. Now this motherboard here is AM4 platforms, so pretty much support right up to Ryzen 5000 series, all the way down to the initial first gen, the Ryzen 1000 series. So pretty decent support there for this motherboard and we're just going to take an unboxing today of this micro ATX motherboard and we'll go around the board and just sort of give you an overview of it basically just to see whether this might be the right thing for you. So basically I pay £60 for this which I think is actually quite a, a decent deal personally. As I said it's a micro ATX board on the AM4 platform. This is more of a budget board of course but Pretty much for most people, I think this is going to be enough of a board for most people at the budget ends. Um, so yeah, uh, let, let's basically just take an overview of it. So initially we get the your sort of two standard SATA cables. One of them has like a right angle to it as well. So if you have got one of those, if you've got like a difficult connector and you want to put like a right angled one in, you've got one there, so that's nice. All right, let's take out the mod board now. So we have our I.O. shield obviously, I.O. panel, which is pretty much standard for a budget board. You're going to get you're going to get the non-integrated ones, so that's okay. And then we have an M.2, what is like a, um, I don't know if you can see that there, but it's it's like one of those sort of um, push pin type ones rather than your actual screw ones. So that's actually quite nice because uh, that means that you're not going to lose that M.2 screw, which everyone does, and then doesn't have a, anything to hold down your M.2 drive. So yeah, that that's that's handy. And then we get our user manual as standard with our beer coaster as well. I don't know why they still put put CDs in, but you know, driver CDs in, because no one's gonna use that, but anyway, it's there if you need it. A little bit like quick start guide of the motherboard layout and what have you is nice. And then obviously a printed out user manual is actually quite nice I think even in today's world so um, yeah I think there's maybe like warranty stuff in there as well so yeah and here it is guys so pretty much sort of like a standard AM4 motherboard I would say obviously this is very much targeted towards budget users um, mainly because we only have the two dim, sl dim slots so uh, you can't put four slots, uh, you can't put four RAM modules in here at the same time, only up to two. But yeah, let's um, sort of go around the motherboard and then I'll talk about the I.O. At, right at the very end and sort of just talk about who this motherboard's for and what have you and just to give you an idea of this board if you are interested in purchasing this board. Because personally, I still think AM4 still has a place, even in 2024, and I still like AM4, so... Yeah, let's start off with the socket. AM4, as I, as I said, so, you know, you can go all the way up to a sort of 5950 x if you really wanted to, although on this board I probably would actually not go that far. I'd say on this board up to maybe like a Ryzen 5 5600, it's, it's kind of perfect really, the 5600X. Um, maybe even the 5700X at a push. I think once you get to like the Ryzen 7 5800X, it's kind of a little bit too far for this board. Given the power phase of only like a, a 4 plus 2 power phase with only like no cooling at all on there. Now potentially you could put like little cooling chips or what have you on this just to kind of cool the VRM, but personally I wouldn't really bother. And um, personally again, that's something that extra that you're going to have to think about and add. And it's, it's just not, you can do it, but it... For, for me personally you want to just use the motherboard out of the box don't you so um you don't really want to modify it because that's kind of defeating the whole point especially as i am buying this new as well this is actually a new board rather than a used board and that's also another weird thing is that the aim for used boards especially on the atx side rather than micro atx they are getting really expensive now and you're sort of talking about 80 or even 90 pounds now up to even on ebay as a used board which i don't know it's just crazy money and i don't understand it but Again, for £60, this is brand new. It is only micro ATX, but I think it's fine. So, yeah, we do have our 8-pin right there in the top left-hand corner. There is actually a 4-pin fan header as well for your um, K2 
case fans and what have you. Um, you could get a splitter and actually use a splitter because I believe there's only the CPU one and then the main, um, like a, an additional one as well. There's no actual additional um, fan headers, unfortunately. So if you are thinking of doing like four fans in a case, obviously, then you are going to need a splitter on that one fan header. So just be aware of that with this board. We do have the CPU um, fan header up the top here. Um, so that's also four pin as well. So that's kind of all standard. As I talked about the two dim slots here. Um, personally, this isn't great, but I think this is enough for most people. Unless you're like one of those kind of odd people that need 120 gigabytes of RAM, which I just can't understand why you would need that much personally, unless you're doing maybe like 8K editing, but then 8K video editing, but then obviously, you're not going to go with an AM4 board at that point. You're probably going to go with AM5 anyway. So, really, this this takes up to 64 gigabytes of RAM with the two modules, two 32 gigabyte modules. That's going to be more than enough for everyone anyway. So, I don't see the problem with only having two slots. But I can see maybe if you've got older RAM and maybe you've got like four gigabyte modules, then you're going to want to use four of them to get your get your 16 gigabytes. So, for some people, they won't like the two slots, but I think it's enough for pretty much. 95% of people anyway. We have our 24 pin um, sort of main uh, motherboard uh, power connector sort of thing. Uh, well 24 pin ATX connector I should say that's probably the best way to say it. Uh, there's no like from what I can see there's no like debugging things which is a little bit disappointing. You know, I can't I can't see like any debugging headers or something like that which was a little bit disappointing but again it's a budget board so to be expected. Uh, as we come down here, we do have four SATA ports, which is quite nice. Pretty much standard with most motherboards now. I mean, sometimes the ATX motherboards, the B450 ATX motherboards might have six, but I think four is actually enough, and especially that you have the M.2 slot as well on this motherboard. Personally, for me, four is more than enough for the SATA, I think SATA six ports? Yeah, SATA 6G, yeah. So that's fine. Then we have a when we have your front panel and also a speaker header as well, so all your like front panel connections and what have you. Then we have the USB USB free header as well here for your um sort of your front USB free ports and your front of your case. Um, so that that goes into there, which is again standard. There's no USB C front panel support unfortunately. So if you do want that. And you do have a case that has USB-C. This isn't the motherboard for you, unless potentially you want to put a a USB-C card, like a PCIe times one slot card, and use the and use a connector like that. But really, I think for most people who are going down the budget route, aren't going to have USB-C at the front of their case anyway. So I think that's fine. Then we have two USB-2 ports. If you are uh, if you are using quite an old case now, then you do have support for those older two um, USB 2 ports if you've got the them in the front of your case, in the front panel of the case. Then we have some kind of like COM and um, TPM module type ports, which we don't really need and no one's really going to use. Then we have your standard audio connector for your front audio on your case. And then we have a SP diff out as well up there. So if you've got like speakers and what have you, special speakers, you can use that. But it is a bit disappointing that you don't have any RGB support at all on this motherboard. Um, so you don't get any um, 5 volt addressable RGB and you don't get any 12 volt um, 4 pin addressable uh, RGB, standard RGB, RGB. You don't get any RGB ports at all for your uh, header port so so yeah that's, that's a bit disappointing in my opinion but it, it is what it is and it's a budget board and you kind of got to you've got to limit your expectations for a budget board i am sorry if it's like really glaring up on the camera there but the with the with the setup that i've got it's just how the uh, <laughs> how the lights are unfortunately but anyway uh moving on we have our main pcie time 16 connector here so this is where your graphics card will go um, just a sort of standard slot again where it opens and closes like that. Uh, then we do have two PCIe times one slots just below that. Although if you are using a graphics card that's two slots, then you won't get that slot which is just under that first slot. If you get what I mean, where your graphics card is, it will be covered by the graphics card, so you won't be able to use that one. 
the furthest one down you should be able to use but if you've got maybe a card which has a 2.5 slot again you're probably not going to be able to use that one so the motherboard setup isn't um fantastic there in terms of that sense i would like to see a little bit more spread out but it is quite a compact micro atx board as well so there's there's that as well to think about uh, and then we do have our M.2 M.2 slot here on the motherboard as well. So if you are using M.2 drives, then you've got support there. This is only Gen 3, so be aware be aware of that. Your your Gen 4 drives will work on here, but again, you only get Gen 3 speeds rather than your Gen 4 speeds if you have a Gen 4 drive. So pretty much just put a Gen 3 drive in here if you are going to go down the NVMe route with your M.2. So then finally... Um, Pretty much, yeah, the, the I.O. panel at the back, the um, rear I.O. So, again, quite legacy here, uh, to be expected to a certain degree, because it's, 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 B4, it's B450, so to be expected. But we do have a BIOS flashback button here, if you can see that, hopefully. I'll probably put, like, better uh, close-up pictures um, from the internet or something up, up there as well to show the I.O. ports a bit better. Uh, so if you are using BIOS flashback, I believe it's one of these ports, one of these USB ports here. It's probably the first one here, but I don't know actually which one we'd use. As the... Basically, if you don't know, I'm pretty sure most people know this, but the BIOS flashback, basically, if you are using a CPU, which is like a newer CPU, you can do a BIOS flash using um, no CPU in your actual motherboard and then just with the, the board and obviously powered up with the board. Um, and then you just put your USB in, you follow the instructions, and then you update your BIOS that way, and then you put in your new CPU. But if you've got anything which is like Ryzen, pretty much any Ryzen 5000 series is compatible with this board out of the box. It, yeah, any any, C, any 5000 series is, is compatible more or less, but maybe the very new ones aren't. Maybe even something like the Ryzen 5500 might not be. But pretty much anything like Ryzen 3000 series and below is going to be compatible out of the box with this, so don't don't be concerned in that sense. There might be a few CPUs you might have to update, but overall I wouldn't worry about that. Now then we do have some very legacy ports here, like the VGA and the DVI. Don't really like to see this, but in, some, in one way this might actually be helpful for more, more budget people because they might only have like the older mother, um, the older monitors, so uh, that might be useful. But we do have a HDMI, HDMI port as well there, so don't be concerned about that too much. So you know if you if you do have a HDMI monitor then you can plug that into the front there if you are going to use something like the Ryzen 5 um, 5600G maybe even the 2400G, 2200G, 3200G and 3400G as well so those are all compatible because B450 so again anything from Ryzen 1st gen up to right to the very end 5th gen so basically all the Ryzen AM4 processors are compatible with this motherboard then we have a PS2 port, which is a bit legacy, but it's there if you need it. And then four USB 3 ports, which I believe are like USB 3.1, but again, I'll put that all at the bottom of the screen to confirm. And then we have a USB 2 ports there as well. So a total of six USBs, um, USBs at the back, which is okay, because most people are going to have two at the front as well. So you're going to get eight, which for most budget systems is going to be more than enough. And then we have our RJ45 Ethernet connector here, which is the one gigabyte per second one. Uh, so pretty standard again. And then obviously standard audio jacks right at the very end, which is very basic audio jacks with only the free microphone, headphone, and then like the blue one, which I'm not sure is. So so yeah, it, it, it is quite a basic motherboard this. You, you don't get a lot, but then you're not paying a lot. So it's the way, it's the, it's the way, um, the way you want to see it really I mean for me personally I do like these boards because I think it gives you an entry level into AM4 and if you are building a system which is maybe a little bit older now but you kind of still want to kind of go down the budget route then this is a good model board to kind of just get you off the ground and get 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 you up and running with a budget build basically so you know and if you are like one of those sort of system builders or flippers this also might be a good option as well because it is very cheap um, especially nowadays with, like I said, the AM4 used boards are starting to go up in price for some reason now. So this might be good because it's, like I say, it's brand new out of the box for only £60. It's quite a good option in my opinion. Plus you get support for pretty much any Ryzen AM4 processor you can think about. So that's also a good bonus as well. 
especially if you want to go to like the first gen or second gen builds, you've got compatibility there for those Ryzen first gen and second gen builds. So I think guys, that pretty much wraps it up. If you do have any questions, obviously let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this board? Would you use this for your personal build? Or would you, if you are maybe like a system flipper or system builder, would you actually use this board as well? Let me know. Please like the video for the algorithm and think about leaving a comment if you want. And please subscribe so you can see my future videos. And as always guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.